Hey everybody, how are you today? Um, it is Saturday. I know we've uh, gotten a little um, off base, but um, we're back and just wanted to say had such a great time on Wednesday um, meeting with you ladies, really um, starting to discuss Behold the Handmaid of the Lord and how this 10-day um, devotion of St. Louis de Montefiore is really not only impacting our lives, but just um, the profoundness and, and what we all have gotten out of it so far. So um, for those of you who couldn't make it, don't worry. Um, we actually only, get, only ended up getting to day three. Um, so a lot of great discussion topics um, for, for those first three days. And so I thought today I'm just going to hit on chapters four, five, and six real quick. Um, really looking forward to meeting with everybody on Monday evening to just finish out the book and um, engage in these last few days in, in this devotion. So um, chapter four, day four, we'll just dive right in, was the mother of the interior life. And so one of the passages that I highlighted was page 31. Mary teaches us that our relationship with her is always about her son. Jesus is the ultimate end or goal of our devotion to Mary. Why do we invoke Mary? Because we want her to bring us to Jesus. Her Marian devotion also teaches us that we belong entirely to Jesus. Mary realized this, though she was vowed, th though she was vowed to her virginity in her life, she freely chose to allow God to change her plans. Mary teaches us what it means to die to ourselves, our wants and desires, and to surrender ourselves to the, uh, the other divine plan. Mary continues to show up for us through different apparitions. Do you feel a connection to her through one of these apparitions? And so we are constantly reminded of her fiat, her yes. Um, Mary did not have to choose. She did not have to say yes to continuing on with being the mother of Christ and really setting this tone for the rest of us, being this example, not only as our spiritual and heavenly mother, the queen of heaven, but also just all of the examples, all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge that she can provide us, um, and especially being women and especially being mothers. Her biggest fiat, the biggest thing that we can gain out of her yes is by leading us to her son. And at the end of the day, she has she has come back in multiple ways for us to help guide us, to get us there, not only through prayers through the rosary, but through her intercession. And so um, personally for, for our family, um, it, it has been the Our Lady of Guadalupe, and that has been a huge tie. Um, more recently for me, um, and you can see behind me, uh, Our Lady of Fatima and even even sea of star or star of sea. I mean, like there is just so, there's so much to look for. There's so much to learn, but we have to be willing to open our eyes to what she is trying to tell us and how she is trying to draw us closer to her son. So out of day four, um, really just going through that um, interior life. It, it takes me back to, again, set the world on fire, ladies, um, to St. Teresa of Avila and the interior castle and just um, recognizing from within what, what we have. So day five, i um, going to jump in, Mother of Disciples. And so on page 37, this next passage, I think really speaks for itself because there's just multiple questions that you can stop and reflect on in this chapter. Um, you could ask, what type of friendship do I have with Mary? Is it one where I just call upon her intercession when her power with God is useful? Or do I value Mary because of who she is and what I can learn from her? Similarly, you could ask, why do I love the Blessed Mother? Do I love her because she's a great intercessor and never left us unaided? Do I love Mary because she gave us Jesus and mediated grace to the world? Do I love Mary because she is our mother, given to us in Jesus' last will and testament from the cross? And again, that, ooh, I feel like day five was a, a big reflection for all of us. I feel like that 
really opened your eyes. Are you saying the rosary because it's it's rote prayer or are you saying it because you are invoking the intercession of Mary? Are you saying those words just because you feel that you need to do it or because you want to do it and because you need it in your life, you crave it. And so they really go through some of these uh, false devotees. And I think that that was just really eye opening because sometimes I think we get caught up in our prayer life and we do it more because we think we have to rather than it's something that we need. It's something that we should be doing. It's something that is um, thoughtful. And again, we, we've also talked about this too. We may not have time just because you can't put necessarily uh, a price or um, a, a stamp on it just because of the amount of time that you spend in prayer. The biggest thing is your your quality of prayer versus the quantity. And so if you're whispering those prayers while you're folding the laundry, if it's while you're in carpool, it's in between clients at work. I mean, the thing is you're coming from the best place and that you are asking for that intercession. You are invoking Mary. You are saying, lead me to your son. Walk me through whatever it is that I am going through, these petitions, these thanksgivings. Um, that's the most important thing. And so, again, I think with day five, that was just, dang, like that was, that was impactful. And so I think that's, <coughs> excuse me, one of those days I can always go back and reread and get something more out of each time that I read it. So... Day six, start of the sea. So I went on to um, page 47. And what I love about day six, it really just breaks down why, why is it important to consecrate ourselves to Mary? What is, like, what is it? What are we doing? And so, again, for those of you who haven't done that 33 days to morning glory, you haven't had the opportunity to consecrate yourself to Mary, this I feel like really hits home. She is that guiding light for us as this day opens, um, star of the sea. She is, she is the beacon. She is bringing those ships in from the dark of night and she is their light. She is our guide. She is getting us to where we need to be. Again, she is leading us to her son, Jesus. So page 47, the first motive for Marian consecration, according to Monifert, to de Monifert, is to devote ourselves entirely to the service of God. The second is to imitate Jesus. The third motive is to obtain the good offices of the Blessed Virgin, meaning we receive a portion of Mary's spirit and receiving grace through her intercession. The fourth is to obtain God's greater glory. The fifth is to achieve union with our Lord. The sixth, seventh, and eighth motives are to bring us greater interior liberty, to procure blessings for our neighbor, and to be a means of perseverance. And I mean, if that doesn't give you hope, if that doesn't give you reassurance, if that doesn't excite you, and it's a lot, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot, and it's, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so this, I feel like, is that stepping stone. We are in it right now. And that 33 days um, to morning glory, that consecration of yourself to Mary, is just reflect on those motives and what those mean to you and what that looks like for you. Because I guarantee when you stop and you really think about those, you're gonna feel that in your soul. You're gonna feel that in your heart. So again, we got through day six. I just, I've gotten so many great things of feedback from you all. You guys are loving this book. I am loving this book. I feel like I'm working backwards, but in a way it's giving me more light and um, just reassurance and um, just 
joy to be doing this with you all. So um, I hope that you guys have a great Saturday. I can't wait to see you all on Monday. For those of you who are available, again, we'll be meeting up at St. Monica's at 7. Um, hopefully we get through the rest of the book, but if we need another day to break it all down, we still can. So um, anyways, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll talk to you later. Bye!